Welcome everyone. Now I'm going to kick this podcast off and I'm going to explain for independent rappers the, the nine most important things that they've got to remember. Now there's nine steps to follow and I'm going to explain each step, right? Now starting with the first step, you've got to find dope beats. Now it's a big problem in hip hop. A lot of artists overlook the fact that beats are everything. I mean the first thing I listen to when I, when I hear a song is the, is the beat. Now Lyrics are a lot, but it's important to pick the right beat. There's a lot of trash beats out there. Now, when you're going through beats, it's vital that you pick the right beat. Now, for me, always pick a beat with the right BPM because you need to find the BPM that works for you. Some artists are good and they can just jump on any beat with any BPM, but it is integral to find a dope beat. Don't skimp on quality because because when it comes to beats, you've got to have a dope beat. Now, that's the, the first and foremost step, right? Now, when it comes to using that beat and utilizing that beat, you have to write a song that people can relate to. There is no point writing something that the average person cannot relate to. I mean, if you want to target a niche audience, you can do that. You can write something to target a certain audience to that dope beat that you select. But you want to pick some lyrics. You really want to pick a topic that people can relate to. And then try and make that song, make the lyrics, as widely appealing as you can. It's, it's so important. It's so integral. So you, you're with me? You've got the first two steps right. So you find a dope beat and you write a song that people can relate to. They're the, fir- the first two points, right? Now the third point, and this is another important step. Get those songs recorded. Now, when it comes to recording, make sure that when you get those songs recorded, that you use the best quality mic that you can for your budget. Now, if you're going to a studio, don't record on a shitty mic because if you've picked a dope beat and you've got lyrics people can relate to, the last thing you want people to do is listen to some poorly recorded material. That is not what you want to do. So it is very important that if you're recording a song, you do it on a decent mic. So that's the third step, yeah? The fourth step is to get the song mixed and mastered. There is nothing worse than when I hear a song that is poorly mixed and mastered. You can tell. You hear tracks, the ad-libs are out of sync, the you know, hasn't the track hasn't been mastered, it's poor quality, it sounds like a dog's breakfast. And that is not what we want. We don't want to record a song that is trash. Because there are too many MCs out there, too many rappers, too many people that can rap these days. And you need to ensure that your your product that you're putting out is the best possible product. Alright, so get the songs mixed and mastered to a high standard. Have a listen to the top 200 rappers. All their tracks are properly mixed and mastered. They don't skimp on this step. So that step four is important. You don't skimp on mixing and mastering. Alright, now step five, cover art. Get some nice cover art made. I mean, you, you've got plans to release a song, haven't you? So if, you, if you're if you rapping, you're going to get your music out there. The artwork is actually what people are going to see. You've got to have good artwork. I mean, you don't want to have a top-sounding song with B-grade artwork. It's it's going to be a, a, a bit of a mismatch, you know, and people are going to see the artwork, and they're going to judge the song, on the artwork alone and it might be one of the dopest songs going but if your artwork does not match the quality of song people are going to look at that artwork and they are going to judge a book by its cover believe me it will happen they'll overlook your song they'll say the artwork is b grade the song must be b grade they'll, they'll just make assumptions and it happens believe me so make sure you don't skimp on the artwork i'm telling you the truth now step six get a music video made. Now this 
is optional, depends on your budget. I mean, if you really want the song to take off, you need to get a music video made. I mean, there's so many MCs now that are releasing songs and every song that they release has a music video. And that's changed in the last few years. Look, now these days, the expectation is you need a music video to accompany your song. And it never used to be like this. You could bring out maybe one or two video clips a year, three or four video clips a year, and 30 or 40 songs a year. But now the market's changed. The, the demand is there for, you know, everyone's trying to compete. So the competition is fierce. So you have to do a music video clip and it can be quite expensive. Music video clips are not cheap, but there's always someone out there that's willing to do a music video for a decent price. You just have to find those up and comers that are easy to work with, that have a, have a budget that will work with you. And you know what? You don't even have to do complicated music video clips for every song. You can just do something basic. You know, visually people want to be drawn in these days as well as to the audio, they want something visual. They want something visual in their face. So that's that's important too. So get your music video made for every song, if you can, if it's in your budget, it's important. Now, so that's step six, right? So step seven is upload to every platform. There are so many platforms out there that people use every day. The most important being is Spotify, uh, Amazon, You've also got iTunes, you've got SoundCloud, you know, YouTube, and then you've got your distributors, you've got Empire and Sony and Symphonics, uh, DistroKid, CD Baby, Amuse. So you have to pick, you really have to pick the right distributor. So it's important to do this. So make sure you get the distribution right. Pick something that's going to work for you. You know, get your music on every platform. Don't forget about websites like The Piff and, you know, even apps, uh, TuneCore and, you know, the various platforms you can get music on. Um, so that's also important. So make sure you do this. Get it up on every platform. And make sure that you do something that, you know, you're going to get your music out there, get it everywhere, get it on Spotify and iTunes and Amazon, all the main platforms. Because people, you want to, you want to be able to cover all your bases, target your whole market, get everyone covered and get the music out there. So it's important to do that. So make sure you do that. Now, after you get your music out in every platform, promote the heck out of it. Get on Facebook, get on Facebook groups, get on TikTok, get on anywhere you can and promote your music every day. You shouldn't rest on this. Promotion is integral. I mean, pay for promotion, pay for playlists. A lot of people say, well, you know, you know, it's cheating. It's not cheating if you're paying for promotion, if you're paying to get your music out there to reach audiences that you can't yourself, that people have the resources to do that pay for it, you know, it, it doesn't cost much to, you know, get a, a good return on your music if you start paying the right people, don't pay for fake views, that's not what I'm saying, definitely don't do that, you can't do that, you have to pay for promotion though, you have to, you know, and you don't have to pay for promotion when you're doing it yourself, but there are some aspects of promotion that you want to pay for, Spotify pay playlists is one of them, definitely do that, Definitely do that. Definitely do that. I'm telling you, you have to. It's important. So get your... Make sure that you're paying for, you know, promotion when you can. Don't have to spend too much. But you want to spend enough that, you know, you end up on the right playlists and your streams go up. When your streams go up, your revenue increases. So you want to find that nice break-even curve at the start, you know, find out just the right playlist to end up on to break even, and then hopefully you'll build enough momentum through all the avenues that you've got to promote, and there are a lot of avenues, and I'll cover this one day in a podcast, one day soon, and all the avenues there are to promote music, but promotion is key, 
because there's no point having dope music if no one is going to hear it. And a lot of MCs put out music and no one ever hears it and they're fucking dope. So once you've covered all these eight steps, now, you know what step nine is? Have a guess. It's repeating all these steps again, you know? Because you're, as, an, as a musician, as a rapper, as an MC, mind you, there are different definitions and categories for people that rap, and I'll explain that as well in the podcast. You have to repeat these steps if you want a career in rap. So there's no point putting out a, a song that's dope, that you've done all the right things for, and then just finishing up there. If you really want to make it as a rapper, you repeat these steps with every song. And that's what you've got to do. That's what it takes to make it. So these basic steps, believe it or not, a lot of people overlook. And you can't overlook these steps. It's so important. Anyway, I'm MC Rapology. Hope I was able to help you out. If you're listening to this podcast, be sure to check out my music. I follow these steps, believe me. All right? This is the end of this podcast. Peace.